Midway through the Sportsmax zone on this Wednesday, Cricket West Indies has released a list of 18 players contracted for the 2021-2022 period. Jason Holder is the only player to receive an all-format contract. Recently appointed Test Captain Craig Brathwaite leads the list of eight players with Red Bull contracts only. The others, Jermaine Blackwood and Kruma Bonner, Rakeem Cornwell, Joshua De Silva, Shannon Gabriel, Kyle Mears and Kimar Roach. The white ball list is led by the captain Kyron Pollard and also includes Darren Bravo, Shea Hope, Akil Hussein, Fabian Allen, Evan Lewis, Alzar Joseph, <coughs> Nicholas Puran and Hayden Walsh Jr. Now there is no place in the 18 for Roston Chase who was the test vice captain as recently as the tour of New Zealand late last year. Chase is among 11 players to lose their contract Shamar Brooks who like Chase declined an offer to tour Bangladesh earlier this year and was subsequently dropped for the Sri Lanka home series has also lost his retainer contract Shane Dorich who left the tour of New Zealand for personal reasons has also been omitted from the list white ball contractees Sunil Ambris Sheldon Cottrell Shimron Hetmar Brandon King Kimo Paul Rodman Powell Romaria Shepard and O'Shane Thomas are also now on the outside looking in. Those players will automatically receive Grade A regional contracts. Cricket West Indies said the players' performance between April of last year and April this year uh, would have been the main determinant in the contract award process. Head of Selectors Roger Harper is scheduled to speak with the media on Thursday morning. So um, a couple of surprises here. I guess it may not be jaw-dropping, but... I, I wouldn't suggest that, you know, players like Chase and Brooks and um, a couple others would not have what been given What do you mean a couple others? I'm keen to hear well, Chase at least and who? At Chase, Brooks and um, Hetmeyer. Okay. For me, yeah. For which, for which, which color ball? Well, any, any, any well, no, Chase, no. Chase for test, for, for red, red ball, ball for mm -hmm. sure. Brooks for red ball mm -hmm. and Hetmeyer for some white ball cricket. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I have to agree with you on that, Lance. And, you know, as we talk about surprises, you know, earlier today on Sportsmax.tv, there was an article written and they were actually talking about Jason Holder coming out and saying, um, you know, he felt as if they... He hasn't gotten what he wanted when it comes to West Indies cricket. So the article is basically saying that I've been very disappointed in how things were handled in the sense that, you know, the, as the players, they give West Indies cricket so much and they feel as if they're not rewarded in that way. And based on what we saw today with the contracts, I feel as if, you know, a couple of players would have those similar sentiments. Mm -hmm. hmm. I'm, 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 I'm departing because... I'm looking, you all know that I'm a huge Roston Chase fan, even yes. before it became fashionable for people to praise Chase. I've been saying that he, he was my guy. So I find him to be very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But for the others, who among the 18 would you say then are not deserving of the color contracts that they've been given? So because we have one all-format guy, Jason, he's untouchable. There's no argument about him. But who is it that we're saying should have been in should have been out, rather, and replaced with Chase, Brooks, and the company. And where have those who have lost contracts managed to play, and what have their performances been for them to then tell the selectors that those guys who took risks to go to Bangladesh and who acquitted themselves so very well, and none of those who played well in Bangladesh performed any less or, or performed weaker in the Sri Lanka series than they did in Bangladesh. I mean, yeah, you were, were double some centurions on the Bangladesh tour who didn't score double century here, but, but the, 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 the quality was still on show. So I'm saying it would be qualified surprise for me if I go the route of surprise, but it, it is just that they have been undermined by the timing of when this contract award process has had to be completed yeah. because there wasn't enough cricket for them to do things to cause the selectors to say, well, you came to Bangladesh, you did well, but that guy has done well outside of the West Indies setup, so he must come back, especially given the strength of his play while with the West Indies. As things stand, I have no problems with the 18 who have been contracted and those who have been left out, even though I have a soft spot for Austin Chase. Definitely, George. I just want to bring this into the discussion, Shea Hope. He was obviously given a white wall contract based on his performance. But is it that, you know, that acts as a deterrent where, of course, the red ball is concerned? Go again. And I know he hasn't performed. I, I'm, okay. I'm, not, okay. I'm not saying that he has proven um, through his performances that he has been doing really well in red ball. But, you know, when you're making selections, is it that, you know, this would 
cause him to feel demotivated and he wasn't um what were the thing give on I, I see up. where you're going but, yeah but but, but well lads you take it yeah first. well I, I wouldn't i wouldn't think so he has a white ball contract so he he is centrally contracted so i don't think he would worry too much about that the message was already sent to him about his red ball game that you know he needs to you know get his act together because we we believe he has quality he just hasn't hasn't been showing it my issue is with the um, I don't know if there's a ceiling on the number of, of contracts that are on offer, but again, it does appear as if players' decision not to go to Bangladesh um, would have affected some of the decisions here. Because to be fair to someone like Shamar Brooks, I know pe uh, players went and, and performed well, and we understood his not being recalled. Yeah. But a, a central contract is a contract given to a player who you think you have in mind as a player, you know, mm -hmm. that... that, that you know, is is ready and willing to represent the West Indies. And prior to him not going to Bangladesh, Brooks had pretty much earned his spot as a pick for the West Indies team. And um, I would count him as unfortunate. Well, Ch Chase the most unfortunate for sure. But I would, I would still say Brooks but, would be a little unfortunate. So, so if, if, if we have the time, two things then. On the Shea Hope point, no, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't disincentivize, disincentivize him because, of course, as, we, as, well, as is fact, he has the white ball contract in hand. The fact is, though, that, you know, Shea Hope is such a beguiling white ball batsman that the quality of his play there causes people to want him to be picked in the test team when his test numbers suggest that he should be planting grass somewhere, not even playing cricket, because that's how bad his test career has been outside of his heroics at Headingley. Outside, and, and we've analyzed that to death here on the Sports Mag Zone. No need to go back there. But he's such, when you see him play ODI cricket, you're saying, my gosh, what a man can bat. And he can. And he is our best white ball, or our best ODI batsman by far. But the numbers for test cricket just don't add up, and the performances suggest that they have been right, the West Indies selectors, with how they've handled him. For Shamar Brooks now, okay. What, so let us take what, what Whitaker says about Shamar Brooks. What cricket, though, has Shamar Brooks been allowed to play or had the opportunity to play to get himself back into the team? None. Yeah? Then, if we look at those he would have to displace to get into the, the, the group of 18, mm. it would be hard for him because there's no basis because those who work came have, have met more than the minimum requirements set by the selectors for performance going from Bangladesh to the Sri Lanka series. Additionally, this is not the Board of Control for Cricket in India, the richest cricket board in the world. True. Neither is it the ACB, nor the, 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 the Australian cricket board, nor the ECB, right? Yeah. Not Australia, not England, not India. So clearly, the fiscal space to allow you to contract 23 Small. players, 25, is not what it would be for the, bigger con for, the, for the bigger country. So 18 is perhaps even stretching it. It's breaking point for Cricket West Indies. So you have to have a finite number. That finite number is 18. Perhaps if it was 19 Chase would get in, if it was 20 Brooks would get in, but it's only 18 and they have been victimized by circumstances, but they've also been victimized by the fact that those who will replace them to go to Bangladesh played well and, do, and deserve to be rewarded, we, don't, we must not forget. Yeah, and you made a good point there, George, about the lack of cricket during that period, because if we look at the statistics, you would see that um, you know, someone like Brooks, who opted not to tour um, Bangladesh, would have... Uh, played just five matches during the period of uh, determination, um, scored 248 runs. He had two 50s, average 24.80, uh, with a highest score of, of 68, which by West Indies standards isn't, isn't bad. His career statistics, um, a little bit better, 28.1. <laughs> 28. 28. 20, no, there are a lot of players representing the West Indies who are averaging their 20s. Yes, yeah. We have been accustomed to seeing that I'm not challenging past, you, I'm just past, asking to say it again. Past, yeah. past 20 years yeah. or so. So <laughs> the fact that, the, fact that um, the, the, the past season was, you know, sort of riddled with issues, um, to some extent, you know, the, the players um, were a victim of that. And um, as I said, I think Brooks, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not complaining about the decision. I'm just saying if I was in Brooks's position, I would feel a little, um, I would feel a little disappointed by, by not, by not um, getting a central contract, given, given where he stood as a West Indies player before his decision not to go to Bangladesh. And, you know, we have to remember that this organization has said over and over that things like this will not affect, you know, selection and all these different things. Yeah. But also we have to take into consideration whenever we speak to Ricky Skerritt, he speaks about, you know, financial um, strain. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. So I'd love to hear from some of the selectors yeah. 
um, you know, how much, what was the cap and of course, you know, how much money they had to, to work with and all these different things. Which are real issues because the CWI will tell you that the COVID-19 issue has significantly hampered their ability to, you know, to boost their coffers financially. So it's been a very, very tough period. And, and I guess George is correct that, you know, the, the West Indies, the Cricket West Indies administrators do not have an overflowing, you know, financial um, flow to, you know, to, to um, support the game and to give central contracts probably as they normally would. The, 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 with all we've been saying about guys, and we've spent time talking about Chase and Brooks, Shimron Hetmeyer must be asking himself, how did I get myself in this position where I don't have a central West Indies contract earning good money at that level and I have to make do with a grade A contract? Mm -hmm. A man with so much ability. Tons. The man's ability is, is, is on ability. Shimron Hetmeyer is world class mm -hmm. on ability. Mm -hmm. But how is it that Shimron Hetmeyer finds himself as 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 as, as the script you, you you read let said Lance mm. on the outside looking in, mm. and you talk about Shimron Brooks being disappointed, I think Sh uh, Shimron Hetmeyer would be crestfallen or worse, yeah. yeah, to find himself in this position, not good for a man with what he's capable of producing to not even being yeah. considered, not even be considered white for yeah. white ball. And yeah. definitely, and I hope that he uses this as an opportunity again, I open up George and Lance to you know ensure that he's never, as you said out looking from the outside, you know, just looking in at his yeah. other... Well, when the decisions were made with the, the teams that were selected and players opted not to go into the bubble situation, starting yeah. with the England issue, the Cricket West Indies were very clear in saying that, you know, players wouldn't be punished or they wouldn't be, you know, penalised for their, their decisions. But Hetmar did opt not to go to England yes. for that bubble and he opted not to go to Bangladesh as well. And George used the term earlier on. It turns out that these players, when they made those decisions, were taking a risk because, you know, most of the other players went, especially for the England bubble, because it was just three of them that didn't go in the England bubble. It was Hetmar, uh, Kimo Paul, I think that was it, maybe one other Guyanese. But for the most part, players had gone to the England bubble. A lot more opted not to go to Bangladesh. But both times, players like uh, Hitmeyer and Kimo Paul were among those that opted not to go right. and to be fair to the players who went and uh, more than went but went and did well you know they, they have to recognize that they made a decision that has come back to hurt them in the end and, 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 and last before we break look not just the raw numbers of what the individuals would have produced which of course we could see watching them on the TV from Bangladesh, well, when they were in Bangladesh, and of course in the Sri Lanka series. Mm -hmm. So those numbers we can assess for her, ourselves. But I'm sure the coaches' report would have gone a far way in concretizing some of these boys into the side to the extent that we have first-timers with central contracts in hand because the coaches got from them a sense that they were, they were eager to learn and they were eager to grasp this opportunity and to look to build a profile for themselves as first pick West Indies cricketers, regardless of format. When you put all of that on the table and you put it against a man who opted not to take the risk for the benefit of the team, even though there was every assurance that things had been put in place to make, to, to, to make the, 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 the trip safe, when you compare it, it's a no-brainer for the selectors. And I'm finding it that in, in, in recent days, there's been so many things, there have been so many things the selectors have done that I'm agreeing with. I'm wondering if something is wrong with me because I can't fault them at all for what they've done with those they've given contracts to this trip and those they've opted not to give contracts to. Mm, okay, end of our cricket talk. Uh, the Olympics come up in less than three months from now and it's time on the zone for Olympic Corner. positive for COVID-19, bringing the total number of cases involved in the event to eight. The world's oldest person, 118-year-old Japanese woman Kane Tanaka, has decided not to take part in the torch relay due to concerns about the coronavirus. Some celebrities who were due to take part have also withdrawn. 
The Olympic torch relay, which kicked off in March, has been undermined by the surge in coronavirus in Japan, which has led to restrictions being imposed in main cities, including Tokyo and Osaka. The Japanese government, however, insists that the Games will go ahead following their delay in 2020 due to the pandemic. COVID-19 protocols released last month rely on frequent testing and isolation bubbles for athletes and coaches, but not strict quarantines or vaccinations. Overseas fans have been banned and organizers are weighing whether to bar Japanese spectators. That's it for today's Olympic Corner. Remember to watch the Sports Mag Zone for your daily Olympic updates.